Hello friends, thank you for joining my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about a very interesting and exciting topic which is mid family translocation renal cell carcinoma also known as microphthalmia transcription factor family genes renal cell carcinoma. In recent years, we have seen tremendous progress in understanding this particular entity. So I would today take your opportunity uh, to discuss this entity because this one also has important clinical implications. So let me start with a very interesting case that I recently encountered in a 23 year old female with left renal mass and periaortic lymphadenopathy. Patient had a 9.5 centimeter unifocal tan yellow homogeneous mass involving the uh, kidney. And as seen here, the tumor is relatively uh, homogeneous as well as circumscribed. On microscopical examination, the predominant morphology was SNI and NEST, which were lined by clear cell cytoplasm. There were focal areas of stromal hyalinization, and also numerous areas showed this type of dystrophic somomatous type of calcifications, a very helpful feature. When we look at this tumor a little closely, it has very interesting morphology. This SNI not only are lined by prominent clear cell cytoplasm, but it also has prominent vasculature. Nuclei appears very low grade, and there is a prominent reverse polarization in which the nuclei are oriented more towards the luminal aspect of this SNI. So when you see this type of morphological features, you certainly would think about clear cell renal cell carcinoma. You potentially would also think about clear cell papillary renal cell carcinoma. The lymph node section is also again very interesting where you can clearly see that there is a metastatic deposit. But this metastatic deposit has a very prominent biphasic type of growth pattern where the central part of the cells are appear smaller while the larger aspect or the larger peripheral aspect of the cells are much larger with abundant cytoplasm. And interestingly, smaller cells are centered around this basement membrane type of eosinophilic material. So this type of biphasic morphology was originally described for TFEB or translocation 611 renal cell carcinoma, which also comes under the family of mid translocation renal cell carcinoma. So you would also certainly think about that particular entity. So there are many different entities based on the morphology can potentially come under the differential diagnosis, but patient's age, as well as the presence of prominent somomatous calcifications, uh, uh, clearly, uh, one should think about translocation renal cell carcinoma. So I did a panel of immunohistochemical markers. This tumor was strongly PAX8 positive, uh, negative for pan keratin, CK7, CN9, and cathepsin K and melanin were also negative. I also did uh, TFE3 and TFEB fish rearrangement studies and Interestingly, 97% of these cells were rearranged for TFE3, confirming the diagnosis of TFE3 or XP11.2 translocation renal cell carcinoma. So this particular entity now falls under the family of mid family translocation renal cell carcinomas in the 2016 WHO classification of renal tumors. This entity was first described by Dr. Sargani and Ladani, and perhaps Dr. Argani and colleagues have done the most work on this particular entity. There are four transcription factor families which fall under the mid family, and particularly TFE3 and TFEB are implicated in the development of renal tumors. These are heterogeneous category of renal tumors that overexpress either TFE3 or TFEB. The overexpression of TFE3 and TFEB are believed to primarily occur through the chromosomal translocation mechanism, but a small proportion of these tumors can also have TFEB amplification mechanism. And there are four these 
family of tumors. So four types of tumors that come under this family. XP11, also known as TFE3 gene fusions, renal cell carcinoma are the most common. Translocation 611 renal cell carcinoma has gene fusions involving TFEB. And then rarely you can have TFEB amplified renal cell carcinoma and melanotic XP11 translocation renal cell cancer. There are now over 15 different gene partners that are implicated with the TFE3 fusion. The one that I have put here in the box are the most common. ASPSCR1 is also or also was known as ASPL gene. Similar gene is also implicated in alveolar soft part sarcoma family of tumors. But in renal tumors, this particular genetic partner is believed to be more balanced form of translocation, which perhaps explain some of the clinical and biological difference in the behavior of these tumors. PRCC, SFPQ are some of the other common partners, but then there are variety of these other partners that uh, are shown in this particular slide and also shown in this particular uh, list here, which are relatively very rare. For TFEB, alpha is the most important and common partner with the TFEB gene fusions. These tumors were first described in young children. So if we look at the renal cell carcinoma, they account for only 5% or, or less than 5% of renal tumors. But the translocation renal cell carcinoma disproportionately account for over a average of 40% of pediatric renal cell carcinomas as seen here in these two graphs. Clearly the peak is in the pediatric age group. If we look at the overall frequency, then this from percentage basis, translocation renal cell carcinoma are still more common in adults. And now these tumors are increasingly being described in adults of various age group. Biological behavior of this tumor is also quite heterogeneous. In general, XP11 translocation renal cell carcinoma are more aggressive than translocation 611 RCC, especially in children. Recently, TFEB amplified renal cell carcinoma has also shown to be biologically very aggressive tumors. When I was at University of Michigan, we published a series of 13 renal cell carcinoma occurring in pediatric age group, and our frequency was about 46% for translocation renal cell carcinomas. And interestingly, similar like other series, a small proportion of these tumors are, have a history of previous chemotherapy. So previous chemotherapy appears to be one of the risk factors for the development of these tumors. And in our experience, majority of these tumors were non-organ confined and also biologically aggressive tumors. So let us review some of the morphological spectrum of XP11 translocation renal cell carcinoma. Grossly, these tumors resemble very much like clear cell renal cell carcinoma. They appear yellow with hemorrhage and frequent necrosis. Morphology can be quite heterogeneous, but this is the original classic appearance that was described for translocation renal cell carcinoma, where you have a prominent alveolar type of growth pattern with abundant clear to mildly eosinophilic cytoplasm. So this morphology is somewhat similar to alveolar soft part sarcoma type of tumors. And in this particular tumor, you can also see prominent dystrophic calcifications, which is very, very common with these tumors. Uh, in this particular example, the tumor resembles clear cell renal cell carcinoma, but in general, Translocation renal cell carcinoma tend to be more higher grade in nature and also have relatively abundant type of cytoplasm with prominent cytoplasmic borders. These tumors also frequently have prominent papillary morphology. So in fact, when these tumors were originally described, the one particular hint that 
can be very helpful to identify this tumor is whenever you have a high grade renal cell carcinoma which is difficult to classify either as a clear cell or papillary type one should consider translocation renal cell carcinoma especially when you have some of my body type of calcifications so here is again an example of a dystrophic somoma body type of calcifications these tumors are no more just clear or papillary type they can have a prominent uh, eosinophilic or pink tumor morphology so in this example you see high grade oncocytic tumors with prominent nested morphology let's review some of the translocation 611 tfeb renal cell carcinoma associated mm -hmm. morphologies This is the classic manifestation of translocation 611 RCC a biphasic growth pattern where you have larger uh, epithelioid cells and then central more smaller cells centered around eosinophilic basement type of material so this particular morphology originally was described only in 611 RCCs but as we more know about this family of tumors this particular morphology is also frequently seen in xp11 translocation associated rcc like the case example that i shared with you today so this morphology even though it is not specific for 611 only in my opinion is relatively uh, specific for translocation renal cell carcinoma so when you encounter this biphasic morphology think about translocation renal cell carcinoma when you see unusual morphology like high grade tumor with pericellular fibrosis again you should think about translocation renal cell carcinoma several investigators have also attempted to look at the morphological association with the specific genetic partners aspl is classically associated with that classic alveolar soft part sarcoma like morphology that i shared with you PRCC TFE3 frequently has a clear cell RCC type of look now the case example which i shared with you where you have subnuclear vacuoles and somewhat biphasic type of morphology that can be associated with either nono TFE3 or SFPQ PSF TFR3 TFE3 gene fusions uh, in intracytoplasmic melanin pigment can also be associated with some of the partners i already showed you morphology of 611 rcc and then tfeb amplified renal cell carcinoma can also have varying morphologies they are specifically more common to have uh, eosinophilic or oncocytic appearance also frequently they have papillary morphologies and here is one such example that i recently encountered in my practice uh, which is shown here the pro tumor has a very prominent oncocytic morphology as well as papillary morphology but same time this tumor does not appear to be classic papillary renal cell carcinoma so in general from all these examples keep in mind that when you have unusual morphology that doesn't fit into a specific subtype of renal cell carcinoma now you should pretty much think about translocation renal cell carcinoma another very uh, classic uh, telling about this tumor is that the translocation renal cell carcinoma typically lack or under express the pan keratins so when you encounter these tumors typically you would consider a panel of all these markers which dr uh, mahmud agul and colleagues recently studied but they had somewhat different experience than what classically we know about the tfe3 renal cell carcinoma in their experience tfe3 rcc had a frequent pan keratin expression but translocation 611 renal cell carcinomas were typically negative another very interesting fact that they showed is that we classically know that cathepsin k is frequently expressed in tfe3 rcc but that is no more true cathepsin k hmb45 are typically expressed in translocation 611 and picoma and angiomyelopoma so one very important conclusion that they made from their important study is that the negative pan keratins and positive cathepsin k expression 
may not be reliable markers of TFE3 RCC. So keep this particular point in mind. They also studied the sensitivity, specificity, and the positive and negative predictive value of TFE3 immunostochemistry in detecting these fish positive renal cell carcinomas. And I think a very important conclusion that they made is that when you have both a strong positivity of the uh, TFE3 marker uh, along with the uh, diffuse expression, you can make a strong confident diagnosis of TFE3 renal cell carcinoma. But a word of caution that I would advise is that these markers are relatively very difficult to standardize in a laboratory. They are more difficult to work up. So many laboratories have a difficult time validating these particular markers. So in my practice and in most of people's experience, you do need TFE3 and TFEB gene rearrangement studies to make a definitive diagnosis of uh, these particular entities. But uh, as Dr. Mahmoud Agul and colleagues showed, I think these are some of the very important markers to keep in your uh, toolbox. So in summary, translocation renal cell carcinoma exhibit marked clinical and morphological heterogeneity. The morphologic spectrum is expanding as we know more and more about these entities and it significantly overlaps with other common RCC subtypes. TFE3 and TFEB gene rearrangement studies are typically necessary to make a more definitive diagnosis but you can utilize a panel of markers to get a preliminary impression as we discussed. And final, my take home message is that translocation renal cell carcinoma should always be in your differential for patients presenting at a young age or for any tumor showing unusual morphology, which is difficult to classify in a specific type. So with that note, I thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Make sure you like this presentation, share with your colleagues, and also please subscribe to the channel that helps me supporting this particular uh, channel and put my efforts into this uh, expanding it. So thank you once again.